empire. So when they occupied Tibet, they said Tibet is the palm. We got it now. Let's go after five fingers. Ladakh, Sikkim, Nepal, Bhutan, and Arunachal are five fingers, and they're coming after five fingers. My first question to you is, how do you see the current situation between India and China? We saw the clashes on the 15th of June, which actually happened after one and a half months of border face-off. There was news of disengagement, but now we are seeing fresh reports that the Chinese PLA has not in fact disengaged. Keeping in mind that this is likely, this situation is likely to continue for a few weeks, maybe months. How do you see the situation from your perspective? You know, for us, it's uh, deja vu all over again, because essentially China came in the name of peace and prosperity for the Tibetan people. But step by step, you know, they take three steps ahead and take one step back, and then they take three steps ahead, take one step back. And ultimately, we lost our country, we lost our freedom, you know. So they, they sweet talking into things, and they talk of peace and harmony and peaceful liberation, things like that. Ultimately, it was a violent occupation of Tibet. Now, to understand China, you know, you must understand what happened to Tibet, what's happening to Tibet. For example, the term Tungo means Middle Kingdom. So they are the middle of the universe and the rest are in the periphery are all barbarians. They ought to be civilized. So that was the justification. China is Tungo, the Middle Kingdom of the universe. And periphery are Tibetans and the Uyghurs. Mongolians and you know, Manchurians, they all were quote-unquote civilized, right? So this is the same expansionist policy that you see uh, from South China Sea to East China Sea to Scarborough Island. And then, as you rightly said, the security law in Hong Kong is essentially to firm up their control over Hong Kong. And then their intervention, interference in the t election of Taiwan, and on a daily basis, there were a lot of allegations from Taiwan. There was a cyber uh, the attacks and you know, a political meddling uh, in the elections. And ultimately, people in uh, Taiwan spoke up and elected uh, the pro-Taiwan candidate, so to speak, of DPP. And the pro-Beijing candidate lost uh, the election. So similarly, you know, weeks after weeks and months long, you know, the, there were protests in Hong Kong, right? So people in Hong Kong and Taiwan are demanding basic human rights and freedom, but the Chinese government want, wants to control and clamp down. We had India recognize Tibet as a part of China in various statements up till 2013. Uh, the India-Tibet border, as they call it, though we still have a force called the Indo-Tibetan Border Police, many people now call it the Indo-China border. So can you help us understand strategically what does India have to gain in ensuring uh, that the sovereignty of Tibet is restored to its uh, No, I think yeah, I think it's pretty straightforward. In the last seventy years, since Indo, you know, Tibet border changed to Indo-China border. 1962 war happened, 1967 war happened, 2017 Doklam, and border incursions from 200 to 300 and 400 is yearly occurrence and the violence that happened recently, right? So what did India gain after recognizing Indo-China border? Tension after tension and, you know, conflicts after conflicts. Uh, India spends about $60 billion a year, you know, uh, patrolling the border of, you know, uh, Tibet originally, now China, right? And it has to spend so much. Now, historically, for hundreds of years, for thousands of years, when it was Tibet-India border, peace, perpetual peace, you know. Tibet was a zone of peace. Tibet was the buffer zone between India uh, and China. And Indian soldiers, they don't have to face even a single Chinese police you know, forget our army, right? So would you say that the Indian government perhaps needs to revisit its policy on recognizing Tibet as a part of China? I understand that uh, uh, you don't normally comment on uh, the internal decision making of the Indian government, but as a leader or political leader of the Tibetan community, do you think that it's time for India to relook at uh, how, how it uh, looks at China with the one China policy? 
You know, we are guests here, so you know we are very appreciative with the host and what India and Indian people have done, has done the most to Tibetan people. So we can't be demanding per se, you know, as per our values and tradition. Having said that, you need to revisit the debate that took place in the Indian Parliament in 1950s. What did Din Dayal Upadhyayji said? What did Ram Manohar Lohia ji said? What did Ra Jai Prakash Naren ji said? What what about Sadal Barabai Patel? And you know, the, even Ambedkar spoke on Tibet. All of them said one thing: we cannot have China enter Tibet easily. We will pay a price in the long run. They will come to our border, and the price will be much higher. So let's support Tibet then. Let's do all we can. So that was the debate. That was almost a consensus among you know one section of politicians, right? And all of them, whatever they have said. It's becoming prophetic now, right? And just, you know, uh, uh, when the former defense minister, George Fernandez, right now, uh, he said, you know, it's not LOC, it's LAC we should be worried about. It's not Pakistan, but rather China will be number one adversary. And he was criticized by, you know, parties and leaders all across political parties. Now his words are vindicated by all these actions, recent actions. So, you know, what I say is one thing, what did great Indian leaders like Jay Prakash Naren said, you know, Kripalani said, those has to be taken into consideration. And I think that they need to be heard and they, their voices and their views should be reviewed and then implemented if possible. I'm talking about Nepal, which has uh, the current leadership in Nepal is of course closely politically tied with the Chinese political leadership. CPC, CCP. While they're at it, there's also talk going on in the Nepalese parliament about uh, uh, the border row with India. Even the issue between India and Nepal has become a bit of an unprecedented situation. Do you have an advice or do you have a, a take 